short to ground, short to power, open, all ways we use to describe problems with electrical circuits. But what if I were to tell you that in the majority of cases, there's really only one way that a circuit can fail? Stick around to find out more. Yes, it's true. There are four different ways an electrical circuit can fail, but I would offer this. In the majority of those instances, there is one constant that doesn't remain constant. That's current flow. So if that's the case, can't I use my digital multimeter in the amp mode, or better yet, add a low amp clamp to it, or a scope, and use current as a tool to help me determine what the kind of a problem I'm dealing with and what might be the cause? Now, what do you need to do current testing? Well, first you need a digital multimeter that has an amperage function, that's all of them. <laughs> make sure that if you're going to use that though, you make sure that you place the leads in the right place. Let me just kind of pull that up. You know, when you're using it for a voltmeter, you're putting your ground in the common terminal and then your red test lead in the voltage uh, ohm terminal here at the end. But if you're gonna use it for current flow, you gotta make sure you move that red lead to the appropriate amp terminal on either side. Now these are fused internally. If you make a mistake, you're gonna pop that fuse. And odds are, you don't have a spare in your toolbox. And the tool guy isn't coming for a week or two. And the store is 30 miles away. That's kind of a bad time to not have a tool. So, to protect your meter and to make life easier for yourself, make yourself a fused lead like this one. Let's pull that up nice and close. And it's nothing fancy. It's just an inline fuse holder. In this case, I've kind of added a, a connector ends so that I can change the ends that I used on the meter on the leads and you want to make sure that you use one that's not going to damage the connector that you're placing this into um, a lot of advantages to it first I can use this to uh, do my current testing as I'll show you in a moment or uh, I can use this for any kind of other testing where I want to protect the meter uh, by just using this in line with my test leads um, so now that I have this done and we're ready to go where am I going to place my leads well, it's current, and current's the same anywhere in the circuit, isn't it? So pretty much anywhere you want. But I like to do things easy, and the very first place I look is the fuse panel. Let's say, for example, with vehicle with a no start. We know we have to have three things for the vehicle to start, right? We gotta have compression, we have to have spark, we have to have fuel. How do you check for fuel? Well, if you like some of us old timers, the first thing you look for is a Schrader valve on the fuel rail, and if there's one there, you push that little valve down to see if any fuel squirts out. Not always the best thing to do. And doesn't necessarily mean there's a problem with a fuel pump if no pressure is present, does it? We need first to make sure that the pump's working electrically. And we can do that by checking the current in the system. So checking the schematic, we find that fuse number 70 on this 13 ram is the one that is feeding the fuel pump from the relay. Uh, there's another fuse that actually feeds power to the control side or the switching side of the relay. Not worried about that one quite yet. So what I want to do is I remove the fuse, which I've done already, and I'm going to insert my homemade little tool in place of the fuse. Now there are what's called a fuse buddy available. I'll show that to you here momentarily. Uh, they look like this, and they're available for different fuses. Let me show that up to you nice and close. Same thing, there's a fuse here that you can install for whatever fuse circuit that you're working on. And then there's a, a place here for you to plug it into the fuse panel. And then, of course, the nice little loop for you to put your clamp around. These are pretty nice to use if you have one to, to do that. But you don't need to buy that. You can make your own. Okay, and once I have that in place, I'm going to set my meter to turn it on. I'm going to place my uh, amp clamps or my amp clamp into the correct jacks. Turn that on, zero it, and now we're ready to go. Put that around the wire. 
Now again, I'm dealing with a no start, so how am I gonna check the fuel pump? Well, you know, when I turn the key on, it's supposed to turn the pump on for a few seconds, isn't it? So let's set the meter and record, because I'm not that fast. And uh, let's see what kind of measurement we get. All right, now that I've hit the key, I can go ahead and hit the min max number. And there you go, Whoop. there's the reading. So you can see that okay. 0.79, when we translate it based on the one milliamp or one millivolt to 10 milliamps conversion scale that this low amp clamp has, we're reading 7.9 amps. Is my fuel pump turning? Yeah, it sure is. So is there another reason I don't have fuel pressure? Well, could be a couple of different things, couldn't there be? Could be a restriction of flow between the pump and the fuel rail. Or it could be that the fuel pump is spinning, but it's not picking anything up. How do we know that? Judge by the current on the fuel pump. If there's no restriction or no um, restriction to the motor turning, then it's going to spin really, really fast and take very little current to do that. So I would expect to see that current less if the fuel pump was trying to, to uh, just push air. Uh, you know, we've all seen uh, cars that came in with a no start where the fuel tank said that it was full when there was really nothing in the tank. Uh, if I had an issue with uh, really high current, higher than normal current, then I would suspect that there's an issue uh, with the uh, restriction in the system somewhere between the pump and the fuel rail, maybe an inline fuel filter or something like that. If the current flow is around normal, well then I've got another problem and I'm barking up the wrong tree. But see now I probably saved myself a lot of time by just simply doing a current measurement. How much current is correct? Well, there's a few ways that you can figure that out. First, how much fuel pressure is specified for the engine that you're working on? General rule of thumb is that it's one amp for every 10 PSI of fuel pressure, but that's not a hard and fast rule. Use that as a general guide. What's the rating on the fuse? In this case, it's installed with a 30 amp fuse. Generally, Fuses are put in that will handle two to three times the current load or the normal current load that circuit is expected to have. So we'll take about a third of that, say somewhere around 10 amps. So that's another number that we can use. The best way is to try this on a lot of known good cars. Get a feel for what's good for Dodge trucks, Ford vans, Audis, whatever the case might be that you're working on, that's the very best place to start. But in terms of our discussion today, what did I want to find out? Is the fuel pump turning? Is that the cause of my nose start? Odds are probably not uh, that it's not because we saw that there's plenty of current flowing through this pump. This circuit seems to be working just fine. How about another example? I know it's kind of chilly out yet while you're watching this, but AC season is just around the corner. How about an AC compressor that won't engage? You're gonna first say probably there's no Freon in the system, no refrigerant in the system. That could be a mistake. You can use current to figure out whether that uh, circuit is working properly or not. Uh, let's go back to a common uh, thing between the two, our fuel pump. What if we were reading no uh, current flow at all? There's an open circuit, the relay hasn't closed, or there's a break somewhere in the system, or we do indeed have a bad fuel pump. So how can we check that the relay is getting what it needs? All of these systems are computer controlled. The computer has to make the decision of whether it turns it on or not, doesn't it? Did the computer decide to turn the fuel pump on when we asked it to, or did it see something it didn't like? I can go to the other fuse and I can check the current on the control side of the relay. That's gonna be a lot smaller, 0.3 to 0.5 amps, or uh, 0.03 to 0.05 volts when you check it with your meter in the low amp clamp like you just saw us do. If I see that, well then I know that this control side of the relay is working just fine. The ECM saw what it wanted. In the case of our air conditioning example, there's plenty of refrigerant in the system to let the system turn on. But the switch side of the relay, that side of the circuit's not working. Uh, these are just a few examples. You'll find a lot more on the YouTube channel, Motor Rage Magazine. I invite you to check them out and uh, learn a little bit more about using current as a testing tool because unfortunately, that's all the time I got for today. I'll see you next month.